In this problem, we're given a function f of x equals x to the 2 thirds minus 4, and we are asked to identify the critical numbers, the intervals where the graph of f of x is increasing and decreasing, and then we'll use that information to identify any relative extrema that the function might have, any relative maximum or relative minimum values that might occur in the graph of f of x equals x to the 2 thirds minus 4. We'll start with the critical numbers. The critical numbers are x values where the first derivative is either equal to 0 or where the first derivative doesn't exist. So the derivative of f of x is fairly straightforward. I can use the power rule to find the derivative of the first term, x to the 2 thirds power, which yields 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third power. And the derivative of negative 4 is 0, so I won't include a second term in this derivative. I will rewrite f of x, f prime of x equals 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third as 2 over 3x to the 1 third. Now, again, critical numbers occur at x values where the derivative is equal to 0. And when the derivative is a uh, rational function like this, you would find the places where the derivative is equal to zero by setting the numerator equal to zero. But in this case, the numerator is just a two. It doesn't include a variable. So there are no values where this derivative is equal to zero. There are, there is a value where the derivative does not exist because a derivative would not exist if its denominator was zero. So I can set the denominator three X to the one third power equal to zero. And then it's, fairly easy to see that the value of x here will be 0. So 0 is a number that would make this derivative not exist. 0 is one of, or the only, critical number for the function f of x equals 2 thirds x minus 4. So far, for the function f of x equals x to the 2 thirds minus 4, we found the derivative is 2 over 3x to the 1 third, and there's one critical number, x equals 0. The critical number of x equals 0 breaks this function's graph apart into two intervals, one interval from negative infinity to 0, and one interval from 0 to infinity. For any x value between negative infinity and 0, like negative 1, if you, if you plug that value into the derivative and you get a positive number, that means that the function's graph is increasing over the entire interval. If you plug a number in the interval from negative infinity to zero into the derivative and you get a negative number, that would mean that the graph of the function is decreasing over that entire interval. I've picked a negative one as a value between negative infinity and zero. I could have picked negative two or negative 100. They'll all result in the same thing, either a positive or a negative number, which will tell me whether the graph is increasing or decreasing over that interval. Substituting a negative one into the derivative, really all I'm concerned about here is whether this is going to be positive or negative. And what it turns out to be is negative one to the one third power, also known as the cube root of negative one is negative one. So this is two over three times negative one negative two-thirds, but more importantly, it's a negative result. So that means that this function is decreasing over the entire interval from negative infinity to zero. Between zero and infinity, between zero and infinity, I can choose any number in that interval. I'll choose a one because that's an easy number to work with, but I could choose two or three or a hundred, any number between zero and infinity, and I'm going to substitute that value into the first derivative. Again, I really just want to know if it's positive or negative. A positive result would mean the graph is increasing from zero to infinity. A negative result would mean the graph is decreasing from zero to infinity. In this case, I have two over three times one to the one third. One to the one third, the same thing as the cube root of one is just one. So this f of f prime of one is two thirds. It's positive two-thirds. That means that over the interval from zero to infinity, this function would always be increasing, would be continually increasing.
To summarize our results, this function is increasing over the interval from zero to infinity. And this function's graph is decreasing over the interval from negative infinity to zero. So what's happening here is that the function from negative infinity to zero is going down. It's decreasing. And then when the graph arrives at x equals zero, it's increasing from zero to infinity. So what this tells me is that x equals zero is a relative min value. It's a relative min value. And actually, because the graph is, is decreasing for its entire for the entire time between negative infinity and zero, and then increasing from zero to infinity, not only is this a relative min value, it's an absolute min value. It's the lowest that the graph ever gets. That min occurs when, again, x equals zero, and I'll find the y-coordinate of this minimum value when I substitute a zero into the original function, the original function. F of zero, F of zero would be zero to the two-thirds power minus four. Zero to any power is zero. And zero minus four is negative four. So, for the function, f of x equals x to the two-thirds minus four, there is one critical number, x equals zero. This function is increasing on the interval from zero to infinity. It's decreasing on the open interval from negative infinity to zero. And there is one extreme value, a minimum, at zero, negative four. This result can be verified by graphing the function using a graphing utility. The graph of x to the two-thirds minus four looks like this. You can see that the graph is, in fact, decreasing from negative infinity until x equals zero. And then at that x value of zero, there's a minimum value, zero, negative four. And then it's increasing from zero to infinity.